Okay, everybody, DK here with Mr. V Amps, and I have um, in front of me a very nice condition box here. It's a Con Electro tuner. These came out in about the 50s. Um, there is a volume knob, which it has stops, but it seems to go around more than 360. Kind of an unusual detent for that. Um, a switch for timber. Uh, choice between A or B flat and a power switch and then in the back I've seen pictures of these and none of them had the cork in them this one actually has the cork which what lies beneath the cork is my, my broken fingernails now it's a adjustment here for it says 434 on the bottom scale and at the top it says 446 so this is like a tweakable adjustable uh, range there so like any good technician would tell you uh, don't do what we're gonna do here we're just gonna plug it in and see if it works and uh, if it doesn't then we fix it and if it does then we put it on a shelf and admire it because it's not really that useful to me today but uh, so anyway, it's plugged in. Now we flip the switch. Let's make sure our volume is modest. And it's on. And nothing's happening. That I can tell. Oh yes. Okay, so it goes woo and buzz. It does need some fixing. Okay, so we got it open. I wonder if this is a newer one. I was expecting a 50L6, and this actually has a 50C5, a 35C5, so it's actually two power tubes there, and then a uh, 35W4 rectifier, right? Yep. So this is a series string, there's no uh, transformer. And uh, essentially if we add up the voltages, 35, 35, and 50, what do we got? We got 70 plus 50, 120. So it's a series string. That's fine. A um, little bit of white magic dust on the back of the speaker here. That's probably just some kind of oxidation that happens over the years. Um, underneath we do have I have one capacitor here that is uh, probably a film or maybe a paper and oil. It's got an unusual value of 0 .027. Um, I have 0 .022's here but I don't know that I have a 0 .027 uh, but our filter cap here is obviously cooked and melting so um, that's that's the reason it's going meh. So we'll just deal with that and see where it gets us. Okay, so got new filter capacitors in there to replace the big failed Mallory. Um, there's some other capacitors. Obviously, we have a .027 something there, and then there's two other Bumblebee capacitors, which I know everybody is going to freak out about. Um, those would obviously be changed if this was going to be put into serious service, but um, I just want to see this thing work, and then it's probably just going to become a wall wall piece here. So um, I've just plugged it back in. We're going to flip the power and see if it explodes. And if it does, that's going to suck. Okay, it's allegedly on. The tubes are beginning to glow. At least one of them is. Yeah, there's the other one. No hum, but I got sound. No timber goes from you have nice or annoying. Then if we switch this, it should change the pitch, take it up. Yep. Okay. Well, that's what it's supposed to do. And that's supposed to be an A440 that it's playing. Um, 
I suppose we should get a calibration device and see if that really is 440. And if it's not, we can tweak it till it's spot on. Yeah, it's working just fine. Okay, what is the point of this thing? It's a box that makes one sound. Um, before we had these, which was, this apparently once had some nice flocking on it or something. Now it doesn't. It's just a screen with a little bit of flocking left over. It doesn't matter. Um, okay, did I just hear this hiccup? Anyway, the way we used to tune instruments before we had strobo cons and things like that that were very expensive is with tuning forks and they would ring a tuning fork and then put it in a little wood base that would amplify it acoustically and you try to get all your musicians to tune up well if you got a whole band just imagine uh, this in a school system you got a whole band of high school kids and you want them all to get tuned up well this thing is loud enough that you could just play it to the group and everybody would have a reference pitch and they can each kind of tune their instruments um, that's what it does. It has an A and a B flat, so let's uh, get a measurement device here and see if that's accurate or not. Okay, so we can see it's running a little flat, which the knob in the back actually looked like it might be running a little flat. So let's turn the knob back here and see if it adjusts. Uh, can I reach it? Can I turn it? difficult to turn. Let's spin it around here. There we go. And there it is, guts on, and that's actually right about where the knob points dead up on 440. So yeah, this somebody had gone in here and turned this before, and now that we've got it set, and there's your lot. The electro tuner is now doing what it's supposed to do, and I'm sure you probably just want to continue to hear that woo over and over. That's just a great sound, isn't it? But that's that's what it is. It's literally a box that plays a note, and you have to put yourself in the correct context of what it was intended to be used for to, you know, understand it. As, as a musician, if you were trying to tune your instrument and you had to ring, your in, ring the tuning fork and then try to adjust your instrument and ring the fork and adjust the instrument, it took a lot longer as opposed to if the tuning fork just ran infinitely and was easily loud enough to hear above your instrument. So, the, you know, this was, this was considered a, a, technologically, a technological advancement for its day. You know, give it credit for what it is. But that's the last one in my collection of con stuff. This was this was the one that I couldn't find, and now I found it. Aren't you excited? Okay, so other than wiping the dirt off of it, it's done. Uh, the reason this pot seemed to have extra detent is just the knob was loose and it had me fooled. This thing can go pretty loud. That's a B flat. And That thing can rattle my snare drum across the room. All right, so it's a one note box, but it is a piece of history. And it's kind of cool that this probably hasn't played its one note properly in a very, very long time. And now it works just fine. I don't know that I'm necessarily going to use the heck out of it, but it's you know part of the collection. If you want to have the con tuning collection, uh, this is kind of the last piece. We have a Strobocon, we have a Strobo Tuner, the tube version, we have the Strobo Tuner, the solid state version, we have the Dyna level, and now we have the Electro Tuner in remarkably good shape. I'm really, really impressed. Most of these are a lot more whooped than this. And a filter capacitor replacement, 
revived it and made it able to be used again. Very cool. Thank you for watching.